Listen, man. They call me the problem, but you could call me the can man, because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can get it. Anybody can get it. But that darkness is not a shadow. That darkness is real. So when they talk about a black hole, they're not talking about some unreal shadow. They're talking about real darkness. Real darkness contains a power. Ah. There's a power out there that is always bringing new objects into view. Stars are dying, stars are being born, and that power that is out there is bringing new objects out of darkness that is real into light. The darkness of the womb, that's not a shadow, baby. That's real darkness. The Holy Quran calls it triple darkness. It's layers of darkness, but in that darkness is the power to create life. In that darkness, there's the germ of light. That's why any believer in God, no matter how dark the day seems, no matter how dark the trouble is that you think you're in, yet in that darkness, there is light and there is life if you hold on and don't let the darkness overtake you till your mind becomes as dark as the darkness that envelops you. The power of darkness is that it can create you after itself. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes we get in a bad spirit. We may call it, liken it to darkness. A gloom comes over the mind because of a thought that we are thinking real or imagined and then that thought begins to reflect itself in our skin it begins to reflect itself in our posture shoulders begin to droop you don't feel good. Hey, what's the matter? I don't feel. What happened to you? A thought that's in my brain that is remaking me according to the darkness of that thought. So now I've become as dark and as gloomy as what is in my mind. So it is with the real darkness that was in existence before there was light. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that an atom sparkled in the darkness. And God began to create himself. He said, out of the material of the darkness. So I guess the question is, what material that was in the darkness that Allah used to create himself? So we're looking for an answer. So what he's telling us is that matter was there. Well, matter was eventually there. 
but what stage and what time? Because stars were eventually there, planets were eventually there, asteroids, meteorites, okay, supernovae were eventually there, gases, helium, deuterium, hydrogen, photons, all these things were eventually there. Okay, so at what stage are you talking about matter? The universe as it is today in 2019 is, was there in the outer space, there in the outer space. So when you say matter, are you saying that there was a time where matter was the only thing in the outer darkness? Let me get that back. A boom comes over the mind. Because of a thought that we are thinking, real or imagined, and then that thought begins to reflect itself in our skin. It begins to reflect itself in our posture. Shoulders begin to droop. You don't feel good. Hey, what's the matter? I don't feel. What happened to you? A thought that's in my brain that is remaking me according to the darkness of that thought. So now I've become as dark and as gloomy as what is in my mind. So it is with the real darkness that was in existence before there was light. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that an atom sparkled in the darkness and God began to create himself. Okay, so hold on. An atom sparkled in the darkness and God be a he began to create himself. So was God there with the atom simultaneously? Like, I'm not following that. Because he said the atom was sparkling in the darkness. And then he said God be began to create himself. So, was, so the, was God there with the atom simultaneously and then used the atom to create himself while he was already there? Let me try to get that back one more time. Try to understand what he's saying. Well, Elijah Muhammad said to us, that an atom sparkled in the darkness. So that's one. The atom is sparkling into darkness. Okay, got it. And God began to create himself. Okay. Again, was God there with the atom as it was sparkling? Or was the atom God? He said, out of the material of the darkness. Okay. So the material of the darkness, atoms. Okay, if you, if you have atoms at this time, there are more materials in that darkness. But why do we start with an atom? You know, atom is, I believe, three protons. You know, there was so much more going on before the form of, of an atom in that darkness. You had... Um, well, hell, if, if, the, if, the, if matter is there, is the gas there at that time? I know you had plasma, you had radiation, you had uh, electrons, positrons, you had subatomic particles. Okay, so we skip past all that, how they were uh, brought into existence, and we just started with an atom. Now, that's, that's leaving out some detailed information, but let's go. So what he's telling us is that matter was there. Right. But before matter was there, there were subatomic particles of matter. So, and matter was created from these subatomic particles. So the subatomic particles were there before Allah. And I guess the atom was there as well before Allah. But the 
matter was doing nothing. Now, where'd you get that from? That the matter was doing nothing. The matter was doing a whole bunch of things, okay? Protons was uh, clumping together, forming atoms, okay? Quarks was clumping together, forming protons. Protons and electrons was, was interacting each other, forming neutrons. Electrons and positrons were warring. Uh, out from that, you got photons. And before all of that, you had plasma, you had mass and energy that was creating uh, matter. So there's a lot going on. It had no form. It had no aim. It had no purpose. Now that's very unscientific, but let's move on. Until an atom sparkled in the darkness. Yeah, but where did the atom come from? That where did the atom come from? The atom came from the protons that come together. You know, it just didn't appear out of anywhere. Or as you say, it just it just didn't appear out of nowhere. Look at you. He said you are created in his image and after his likeness. How did you stop from a tiny life germ that with the naked eye, the one that impregnated the egg, you can't see it with your eye. That's how infinitesimally small that sperm was. Okay, so we jump from the atom of life, as he calls it, to the sperm of life. Okay, so I guess he was drawing an analogy from the atom to the sperm, how they both create life, but he never really told us how an atom created life. Unless he's saying, which I think he's saying, that the atom, the life the atom created was a lot. But he never even went into that. That's how infinitesimally small the egg was. But that sperm with a little tail and a head had some intelligence in it because it knew where it wanted to go and it knew what it wanted to do in the dark. In the dark, that sperm found the egg and the first cell of life began in darkness. <laughs> but the cell had a light of itself electricity inside the cell a neutron a proton and an electron the cell of life was like an atom listen listen the light of itself caused it to stop rotating around the light of itself and it began breaking down and building up we don't know how long it took for brains to form wait what in the darkness huh but the first thing that forms when a baby is conceived in the womb is not the tail the first thing that forms is what and it is the head that calls the arms into existence, the feet into existence, the organs into existence come from the head. Well, when you didn't even have thought, before you could think, there was an intelligence working in you that is the light of God. The power of God. Even before 
the growth of intelligence in the darkness. We okay. Fashion. So the atom out of a tiny is mostly light empty germ. space. The rest consists of positive charged Sperm nucleus, protons, with ovum. and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of negative, and we were negative called negative charged into existence electrons. Okay. By what was in that tiny sperm, the head of it. At the end of nine months, we came forth knowing nothing but with a capacity to learn everything. But again, before an, uh, before an atom, there were protons, neutrons, and electrons. So and they were forming atoms, so they were doing something. And the atoms were doing something. In the Holy Quran, in Surah. So I think he's done there, so we can go here now. Did you know that you've got a messenger of God inside of you? Long before there ever was a messenger, warner, or prophet on the earth, Allah already put a messenger, warner, and prophet in the earth. Did y'all see, y'all see what I, I said? In the earth. Did you know that we are made of the exact same material as the earth or the earth's made of the exact same material as us? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that over 78 trillion years ago when the first God created himself in triple darkness. That while he was creating himself in triple darkness, he created his home planet simultaneous to his own. Hold on. Wait, let's, let's take that back. Did y'all see, y'all see what I said? In the earth. Did you know that we are made of the exact same material as the earth or the earth's made of the exact same material as us? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that over 78 trillion years ago, when the first God created himself in triple darkness. Bro, how did he do that? How do you create yourself out of triple darkness? What was used to create yourself? What did you connect? That while he was creating himself in triple darkness, he created his home planet simultaneous to his own self-creation. And what did he use to, to do that? That means whatever he was making himself out of, he made his home planet Earth out of. But what's the whatever? You, you didn't hear me. No, nah, I did. I want to know what is the whatever he created himself out of. That's why when you look at the Earth, the molecular structure of the vegetation of the earth matches the flesh of man. In fact, if you pull a leaf off the tree and you put the tree, the leaf right next to your hand, you'll see lines moving through the leaf just like lines are moving through the hand. As the leaf, all praise is due to Allah, as the leaf is on the end of the branch that produces the fruit of the tree, so it is these hands produce the fruits of our labor. Did you know, black man and woman, that if you lay down a globe flat and put a human body next to it, the same way lakes, rivers, and streams move on the planet or the same way veins and arteries move through the body, the molecular structure of the water of the earth matches the molecular structure of the blood and the saliva and sweat of man. On the earth, you got two types of water. You got fresh water and you got salt water. Salt water is in the oceans and the seas. Fresh water is in the lakes, rivers, and the streams. What about inside of us? When you cry, that's salt water. When you sweat, that's salt water. But the saliva is fresh water. The blood is fresh water. So you got... Okay, y'all still don't agree. All right, let me... Okay, I got... Mathematical theology. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us 
that we live on a planet that's 24,896 miles in circumference, 7,926 miles in diameter. It has 57,255,000 square miles of land. That's out of 139,685,000 square miles of water. 68,635,000 square miles of water in the Pacific Ocean. 41,321,000 square miles is the Atlantic Ocean. 29,408,000 square miles is the Indian Ocean. And that's 1 million square miles of lakes and rivers. Hold on, though. Hold on. Because this was, this was already being taught many, many years before Elijah Muhammad. In, in Greece. Hold on one second. Let me get you the name. Here we go. Okay. The Eratosthenes experiment, proving the earth is spherical in 205 BC, Eratosthenes successfully determined the circumference of the earth by measuring the length of the shadow cast by a rod. He did the measurement in Alexandria and timed it to coincidence with the sun is directly overhead. So before Elijah Muhammad taught you that in 1950 or 60 or even 1930, this was already found and being taught in 205 or 205 BC in Greece. Okay, or definitely by a Greek, maybe not in Greece, but definitely by a Greek. I believe they could have been anywhere uh, in Libya, stuff like that. But I just want to add that in there because we're fact checking. So I got to give you where those measurements actually came from first. Before this guy, we have no idea where he came from, but he was studying from the libraries of Alexandria. So, you know, people will say he got it from. Egypt or Kemet. Let's go on. Question though, do you know when you add up the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and lakes and rivers, it doesn't come up to 139 million uh, uh, 685? It comes to 140 million 385? Which means that there's 700,000 square miles of lakes, rivers, streams, oceans, and seas somewhere else? Guess where the rest of the water is at? It's inside the vegetation of the earth and inside your body. We got 700,000 square miles of lakes, rivers, and streams, seas, and oceans moving through the body. The bone of man is just like the rock of the earth. So before there ever was a messenger of God on the earth, there was a Christ consciousness inside the earth before Christ ever was a character on the planet. Before Muhammad was ever a man on the earth, there was already a Muhammad mind in the earth. Before Allah had to come in the person of, there already was an Allah awareness inside of you. But when man lost the ability to listen to that Muhammad mind, that Christ consciousness, that Allah awareness from within, when we stopped listening to the messenger of God in the earth, Allah out of his mercy had to put one on the earth. That's why every title of all the prophets, messengers, and warners is a reminder. Prefix me, re means to do again. Mind means to, to, to put on the mind. So remind means to put back on your mind. Well, if it got to be put back on your mind, it used to be on there at one point. Something happened that we lost it. Y'all right? Man didn't need messengers, warners, and prophets. Religion is a new concept. We didn't just listen to the voice within. The Holy Quran says it like this. Surely creatures. How do you know? Because just like a bee. Black man to the elephant. Okay, so I guess 60 the, minutes the on creation June 14, of Allah and the creation of the universe. They did a show that they called summed the up in five elephant. minutes. Bird Park in South Africa. I find it interesting that everyone's creation story is like very short. You know, for something so broad, it took so many years, 78 trillion years. And he says, possibly over. How do you sum it up in five minutes? So then we have the creation story in, in the Bible. That's summed up in 
two minutes, you know. But when you look into the Big Bang, that that's a lot of information. That's not summed up at all. Okay, so let's see what's going on here, you know. So let's move on to. I think he's done. I do not. Your house in you. All things are possible. Let's move on to the next guest. To wisdom with us on triple darkness. Triple darkness, okay. Triple darkness, you can go back. It took us back 78 trillion years ago. Everybody want to know what took place in what a triple darkness consists of. In triple darkness, there's a high force, a high power, electrical, universal force and power in the darkness, okay? And the, uh, uh, going back over 78 trillion years ago, uh, 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 in the depths of total triple darkness, so you go into triple darkness, now you got to go to the depths of total triple darkness, and the depths of total triple darkness is the source of all life creation. And this is where the um, that life creative, the, the universe of the supreme mind was housed in the life creative atom for how long? I don't know how long, but I know it was, we, 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 um, we, 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 we came to an understanding that was there over 60, over 78 trillion years ago. So with the movement of darkness connecting with the this life created atom, some kind it brought about a connection and it freed that universal divine supreme mind from that life creative atom, which was free. Now that that, that universal divine supreme mind was of the highest supreme intelligence then. You say, well, was good, was Allah always here? Allah always was here. Spiritually, mentally, spiritually, and mentally, but he didn't manifest himself into shape, form, and fashion until something like 66 trillion years ago. That's when he came into the, the shape, form, and fashion of the original man, which is the, the arm, leg, uh, arm, leg, leg, arm, and the head. You understand what I'm trying to say? So you, but he didn't let that shape, form, and fashion be known until he decided to come in the shape of the of Master W.D. Farad Muhammad. Now, a lot of y'all say, well, Master W.D. Farad Muhammad was a white man. Let us, let me shut up. Don't, if you're stupid, keep your mouth shut and nobody will know that you're stupid. Okay? Everything comes from total triple darkness. <laughs> you understand? Now, the universal most high God, Allah, who came in that high intelligence, Came in the shape, form, and came in the shape, form, and fashion of Master W. D. Farad Muhammad. So, only because he came that way, so he can come inside of America to his brother. Okay, because Master W. D. Farad Muhammad is your nephew. That means his father is your brother, and the messenger made it plain that you are. We are direct descendants from the universal Most High God. So his reason for coming was to return to us what we needed to take us out of the situation that we was in, which was prophesied for us to go through just to show and prove that Allah is God. The 6,000 years of, uh, of, of Yaku's rule was only a test for God. You can't be God unless you have an opponent. You can't be a champ unless you have a challenger. Why is it so hard for you jackasses to see that? You understand what I'm trying to say? So in order, why did God make a devil? To show and prove that he is God, that he can make a devil and give the devil 6,000 years to rule, and after 6,000 years, come back and destroy the devil in one day. You understand? To show and prove that he is God, always was, always will, always is, and always will be. And they say, well, when's that going to take place? No, just Like he told you, in his own good time. It's taking place now by you not having a spiritual eye 
And you can see how he's destroying the demons that we teach every day. Well, how's he doing that? Rain, hail, snow, earthquakes, alcohol, drugs, tobacco, pork, okay, okay, your chicken, you understand, cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, all these are destructive forces. Mental collapse, uh, strokes, heart attack, all this is destructions. And, 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 if you, and, if, and if you face reality, all that comes about by you not maintaining how to eat to live, okay? So when you rebel against, against this universe of divine supreme wisdom that came to you, all you do is hurt yourself because instead of it working for you, it works against you. Like the God and earth say, build or destroy. Once this wisdom comes to you, you got the understanding, you got the power to build a life or destroy your life. Okay? And there's no excuses. No excuses. Because only one you hurt is yourself. You don't hurt nobody else. Now, for all you jackasses <laughs> that I hear sometimes say, Master for Rob Humble is a white man. Yes, I don't care about that. Let's go back to the um, numbers. Triple dollars, you can go back. It took us back 78 trillion years ago. So just for clarity, the Bible teaches 6,000 years ago. Science teaches, modern science teaches 13.8 billion years ago. And well, according to what we're hearing, the Nation of Islam teaches 78 trillion years ago. So that's just a different number. Everybody want to know what took place in, what a triple darkness consists of. In triple darkness, there's a high force, a high power, electrical, universal force and power in the darkness, okay? And the uh, uh, going back over 78 trillion years ago, uh, 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 in the That's depths really of total triple darkness. So you go to triple darkness, now you got to go to the depths of total triple darkness and the depths of total triple darkness is the source of all life creation and this is where the um that life creative the the universe of the supreme mind was housed in the life creative atom for how long i don't know how long but i know it was we we we, we um we, we well you do know how long you said 78 trillion years ago bro Atoms are a byproduct of subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, okay? They come before atoms, and before they come, you have quarks. So according to modern day science, they never was around that long. You know, their existence came definitely after 13.8 billion years. So an atom existing 78 trillion years ago, that's going to need some, some proof because people barely believe 13.8 billion miles. So good luck with the 78 trillion. We, we came to an understanding that was there over, 60, over 78 trillion years ago. So with the movement of darkness connected with the, this life created atom, some kind of brought about a connection and it freed that universal divine supreme mind from that life creative atom, which was free. Now that 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 universal divine supreme mind was of a high supreme intelligence. Then you say, "Well, was good? Was our law always here? Our law always was here, spiritually, mentally, spiritually, and mentally, but." He didn't manifest himself into shape, form, and fashion until something like 66 trillion years ago. That's when he came into the, the shape, form, and fashion of the original man, which is the, the arm, leg, arm, arm, leg, leg, arm, and the head. You understand? All right, listen, bro. According to modern day science, <laughs> there was nothing around at that time. You know, again, modern day science brings it back to 13.8 billion. And it says the only thing that was around was mass energy, uh, possibly radiation, and um, plasma. So if you got a man up there in space with, and, it, and the temperatures was like, temperatures never known to man. It was so hot, it was 
unbelievable. And you got a man up there surviving like that. I mean, there are not even stars. There's nothing around besides mass energy, radiation, and plasma. And you're telling me there's a man up there living on lay lay on head. You said that. You know, that that's very unscientific, bro. That that's supernatural. And that's okay. I'm trying to say, so you but he didn't let that shape, form, and fashion be known until he decided to come in the shape, form, and fashion of Master WD for Rod Muhammad. Now, a lot of y'all say, well, Master WD for Rod Muhammad was a white man. Let her, let me, shut up. Don't, <laughs> if you're stupid, keep your mouth shut and nobody yeah. will know that you're stupid. Uh -huh. Okay. Everything comes from total triple darkness. <laughs> you understand? Now, the universal most high God, Allah, who came in that high intelligence, came in the shape, form, and, came in the shape, form, and fashion of Master W.D. Farad Muhammad. So only because he came that way so he can come inside of America to his brother, okay, because Master W.D. Farad Muhammad is your nephew. So that means his father is your brother. And the messenger made it plain that you are, we are direct descendants from the universal most high God. So his reason for coming was to return to us what we needed to take us out of the situation that we was in, which was prophesied for us to go through just to show and prove that Allah is God. The 6,000 years of, uh, of, of Yaku's rule was only a test for God. You can't be God unless you have an opponent. You can't be a champ unless you have a challenger. Why is it so hard for you jackasses to see that? Well, you know I'll tell you so why. Order, why because God if, if okay, now I know this is your teaching, it's not Elijah Muhammad's, but let's go off your logic. You said you can't be God without, or you can't be champ without an opponent. Well, if this creation was done in sixty-six trillion years ago, or seventy-six or seventy-eight, still, you did not have an opponent until you said the white man was created until six thousand years later. So that means that Allah was not champ at all for most of his existence because he did not have an opponent. And if you create your own opponent, that's not really fair either. In the world of boxing and UFC and, and other physical combat, combative sports, that's called cherry picking. If you can pick your adversary, create your adversary, pick your opponent, that's called cherry picking. That's not still showing that you're the, the champ. Now, I know I'm nitpicking, but I'm just going with his logic. Um, that's not proving anything. That's called cherry picking your paper champ. But again, this is his understanding. This is not, his understanding does not represent the views and opinions or, or the belief system of the nation of Islam. I, I understand that. To show and prove that he is God, that he can make a devil and give the devil 6,000 years to rule. And after 6,000 years, come back and destroy the devil in one day. You understand? To show and prove that he is God, always was, always will, always is, and always will be. And they said, well, when's that going to take place? No, Chelsea. Like he told you, in his own good time, it's taking place now, but by you not having a spiritual eye, and you can't see how he's destroying the, the devil each and every day. Well, how's he doing that? Rain, hail, snow, earthquakes. Okay, so now let's go to... So we got it from a little bit from Elijah Theology of Time, like four minutes. We can't, the audio wasn't really clear. We got it from the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan. We got it from Brother Nori, Brother Student Minister Nori. And this is Melchizedek. Mel, Mel we got it from him. All of them are respected in their own right, by the way. But I want to give Elijah Muhammad a chance to go to explain this in his own book, Our Savior Has Arrived. We're going to start at chapter... Chapter 11, we're going to explain this self-creation and, you know, all this stuff, the universe. Okay. I want to make sure you can see this as I read it. And we're going to wrap it up with this. Okay, yeah, you can read it. So it says, this is Our Savior Has Arrived, Chapter 11, Paragraph 25. You know, this is the online book. Uh, if you have the book yourself, is chapter 11 just count 25 paragraphs you know just that simple now it says imagine 
you close your eyes now. Imagine the whole entire visibility of the universe is gone from you. This is the way he was born, in total darkness. There was no light anywhere. Out of the total orbit of the universe of darkness, there sparkled an atom of light. Again, that's not how uh, life was created, but I know what they're trying to say. They're trying to say the life of a lot. Okay, I accept that. But the atom didn't come out of just nowhere. There was things already there that produced the atom. Again, I just explained that uh, you always had matter. I'm sorry, not matter. You always had mass, energy, plasma, and I believe radiation. They were always there. Okay? An atom of life just doesn't come out of just nowhere. You have subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, electrons, and before them you have quarks. They all are necessary to give rise to an atom. So the atom just doesn't come out of nowhere, right? Anyway, um, so it says, once upon a time, but don't ask me when it was. No problem. He, he's not sure on when this all have taken place, but according to the other guys, 78 trillion years ago. So we have a date, but maybe he's telling the story and can't recall it at the time, which happens. I read stuff all the time or talk and I can't recall something. You know, we're just humans. How could that atom of life make a record of his own creation? Good question. It could not write, it could not write its own creation, the record of it, because he was the first. There was no recorders around him. He was first to record his own self. Okay, so he has the records and the time. How long was that? We can't tell. We weren't there. I, I understand, but you just said he was there. And he kept a record of his own self, so I would think you can tell. But let's move on. I'm not going to nitpick. He was the only one in the whole entire dark universe. I think you would be the only one there because they're just, like you said, matter, energy, plasma, radiation, and you have an atom, you must have photons and neutrons, electrons, positrons, antimatter, dark matter. You got all this stuff going on. And if you're, if you're there, you will be the only person there. 78 trillion years ago, 66 trillion years ago, 76 trillion years ago, and even now, you'll be the only one there right now, 2019, okay? If you're up there, you'll be the only one up there right now. So you will always be the only one there if you go up there. Okay? So he was the only one in the whole entire dark universe. He had to wait until the atom of life produced brains to think what he needed. All right, stop. Wait. He had to wait until the atom of life produced brains to think what he needed. How long was that? I don't know, brothers, but he was a black man. Now, that's not answering any questions. Matter of fact, that's not answering your own rhetorical question. You ask a rhetorical question and you don't, know, you don't even know the answer to it. Rhetorical questions are rhetorical because the answer is already assumed. So he asked a rhetorical question but didn't have the answer to it. Well, it brought up another question. How can an atom grow brains anywhere? let alone in the outer limits, the outer, outer space. How can an atom grow brains? So there's no way that that has to be figurative. That has to be a, what they call a simile. That has to be another, an allegory. That cannot be told as truth or history, let alone science. He had to wait until the atom of life produced brains to think what he needed. Okay, let's continue. But he was a black man. You don't know how long it was ago. Allah kept a record. Okay, so let me just point that out right here. Allah kept a record of his own self. Let me just throw that right there. But for some reason, we don't know anything. You know, this just goes to the records of Allah. It's real simple. Coming out of total darkness in what time? So it's interesting that Elijah Muhammad says total darkness, but all those videos that we heard prior to this, they kept saying triple darkness, okay? As though there was a difference. 
and I guess it was, but Elijah, if there was a difference, then the difference they speak of, Elijah Muhammad don't know anything about, because he's saying total darkness. He said, we all could say that we are produced by a white God, but there was no light nor any white anywhere. Okay, so I get what he's trying to say. He's trying, he said, there was all darkness. So God revealed to me in that darkness, which had no end to it, that darkness created an atom of life. So what he's trying to say is that darkness creates black people and light creates white people. In that darkness, which had no end to it there, that darkness created an atom of life. Well, that's partially true. Eventually it did, okay? But it, again, it was steps to the atom of uh, being created or coming to existence, as we say. And the color to be, the color had to be black as there was no light. Therefore, it had to be the color of the, of the thing that created it, all praise due to Allah. Now, when you say no light, um okay let's just move on so this is paragraph 32 you make sure you guys can see it so you can read along so you don't think i'm making this stuff up this is our sir has arrived chapter 11 paragraph 32 the black man's god why do you reject the black god when the black god is your god the black man or sorry the black god made the white god why do you reject him long ever there was as the old people used to tell me when I was a little boy and when it and when and where he was God. I bear them witness today. Just think it over. A small atom of life rolling around in darkness. Think it over. Well, it's hard to think it over if it's rolling around with brains. All right. I, I, I can think over an atom of life rolling around, but if you're telling me that thing had brains, I can't think that one over. Okay. So it says building itself up just turning in darkness, making its own self. Let's go into it. Do I have any proof of this? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Well, you just said you didn't have a record of it. Now we have the proof all of a sudden. Okay, fine. Maybe the record is revealed. Let's go. He made himself into total darkness. He put his own self turning, turning on his own timetable in the black womb of the darkness. He started rotating. He demands every life that comes into the universe today to start turning first over to me, for I had that to do myself. Now, I am going to see that every life that comes into this universe comes out of total darkness. You see, he's consistent with total darkness. I don't read the word triple darkness anywhere. Every life. Yes, sir. So he's saying every life comes out of total darkness, but those who say they follow him are saying life comes out of triple darkness. Yes, sir, it must come out of total darkness. You see, he's saying total darkness. And this is the, the founder, this is the originator. So that's what it is, it's total darkness. Out of the womb of our mother did we come. We were created there out of the sperm that was emitted into the total dark room, the womb. It took that to make that child. He couldn't be made in the light. He must be made in total darkness. Total, not triple. We must know ourselves. We must know the nature of life. We must know the law of life before ever we can say that we are masters. Okay. Now, if by nature we are born in total darkness, he's con very consistent. He, he makes that specific. Okay, it's total darkness. Think it over. And if by nature life brings us out of darkness, and if by nature we walk in light from out of total darkness, and if by nature we can think through darkness and bring light out of that darkness by our own brains, we did so with the white race, look right into the sperm of life and find him. That's supposed to say he's unalike. Okay. He's unalike. Take it. Separate it. You first, your first separation from the white and black was done. Now you say, no separation, we'll settle it. Okay, so paragraph 35, oh, no, let's go forward. Forward, maybe, Mr. Fool, but it was, but it will at once upon a time, you cannot see out of a dark, see out of darkness. Now today you can see out of light. Paragraph 35, 
35. Who was it that did this? Was it a white guy or a black guy? It was a black guy. That's who did it. He has taken his universe, think it over, and engulfed it with the path of light. Give me a second. And engulfed it with a path of light. He made the lights so close to each other that the light of this one never stops before this one ties his light in with that one. It was a whole path of nothing but light, a belt around his universe. He thought so much of his earth, he loved his earth so well that he took his own earth and divided the live planets rotating around it, around it with light stars. Take it over. About 600 million miles out from this planet, he has a region of stars that divides the other planets from these inner planets. He has made a wreath. I'm right here just in case you want to know where I'm at. He has made a wreath around his own head of nothing but stars. Think it over. He made a crown for himself out of the earth with stars. This is my house and I want to put a crown around it with stars. You tell me you don't like the black guy. Paragraph 36, he speaks, brothers. His desires come to pass. He takes his enemy folds, come up of the power of nature, and makes him to makes him beg to be let go. All right, so I'm going to get back into... He said, um, so down, I'm down here. He says... Takes his son, I made you, ball of fire, 853,000 miles in diameter. Um, you know, what? Well, that's impressive. Well, again, you know, we got the Greek who already explained all that. But I would love for him to tell me how hot the sun was. And that would have been impressive because the Greek um, was able to determine all that. So that's, not, that's not too impressive. But tell me how hot that sun is. You know, that's something modern science can only tell you. Okay, so paragraph 28. Now let us take a look at the white guy and the black guy. The black guy produced himself. He self-created. Then that black guy made the white man. He didn't create him. He made him from himself. Now I just want to point out that when he says self-creation, he didn't really go too deep. He just said an atom. You know, so I guess... The atom kept spinning and spinning and spinning. So the atom didn't, uh, let's look at, I'm a little confused there because he didn't really go into depth on how the atom created a lot and how was a lot able to survive up there in the outer limits. And right, he was either, if he was away from the sun, it was because the earth cool, it got cold as hell up there. So he was able to survive in a freezing cold or, you know, survive in extreme heat. So an atom, an atom is defined as, uh, let's read this real fast and we'll go back. Smallest unit into which matter can be divided without the release of electric, electrically, electrically charged particles. I'm trying to tell you, it's something about reading while you're being recorded, you know, or just talking, period. When you know you're being recorded, your reading, you know, conversation just falls. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Maybe that's why actors and actresses cut, 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 cut so often. It also is the smallest unit of matter that has the characteristic properties of a chemical element. As such, the atom is the basic building block of chemistry. Most of the atom is empty space. The rest consists of positively charged nucleus of protons and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons. The nucleus is small and dense compared with the electrons, which are the lightest charged particles in nature. Electrons are attracted to any positive charge by the electric force. In an atom, electric force blind, bind the, the uh, electrons to the nucleus. Okay. Atomic model. Most matter consists of an agglomeration of molecules, which can be separated 
relatively easily. Molecules in turn are composed of atoms. That's what I was trying to find. When he says a lot was created from the atom of life, I, I, I wasn't sure, I just wanted to verify. When he had to, when atoms combine, they become molecules or they form molecules. Um, so I don't know, man, but let's get back to the reading. Just a little confused there on how an atom creates a man in space. Okay, so he says right here, the Bible teaches you in Genesis that God said, let us make man. I want you to wake up. Okay, so right here, it says, because that's impossible now, God can't make a man without a help. No, no. He was self-created himself, but he can't make a man without help now because of the law of nature. <laughs> Wait. The law of nature applies to the outer space as well. Okay. He says now a man needs help because of the law of nature, as though the law of nature doesn't apply in a, the outer limit space. Creation won't allow him to do so. So it takes, and us now, it takes two people to make a man. Therefore, the Bible and, and Holy Quran plainly teach you. Us and we made him, did not create him, but made him. All right, so I think that's about it. Maybe, did I read 39? It says, He created the heavens and the earth. I'm right here, paragraph, paragraph 39. How did he do it? First, he created himself, and he was light of himself. He emitted light from the live atom of self. Wait, so he emitted life. He emitted light. He emitted light from the life atom of self. Hmm. And they still can do that. Who can do that? They can crown you with light. I say, my friends, wake up. So a lot emitted light from the live atom of self. So he didn't need to make molecules from what i'm reading i read it correctly of the atoms he didn't need to stack the atoms to create something physical he just emitted light out of the atom and but he said the light the light causes white folks he said that darkness creates black folks and the light created white folks that's why he asked you was god black or white he said there was no light up there so he had to be black you can rewind it and check that out but now all of a sudden, he emitted the light out of the atom. So I guess we did get the white God after all. The black man, so I'm right here now. He says, wake up. The black man does this. He creates a light out of darkness where there was no light and calls forth light to come. All right. Now that's a serious issue. Hold on. That's because he just said that that would that's what make God white. So let me just document that real fast so we can come back to it. I am here and all around me is darkness. I need a light. The sun, having come into existence, started to shine. Wow, so we just talking about the sun. No stars, no black holes, none of that stuff. Supernovas, no comets, asteroids, none of that, just straight sun. The sun having come in, so it, it appears he believed the sun came next. The sun, having come into existence, started to shine. He didn't have to get wood coal or gas, he just said, come on, son. She refused to stay back. And she, so all Allah said was, come on, son, and the son appeared. She refused to stay back and she brought him warmth, heating that dark universe. Bro, you think the sun, wait, wait, wait. So, so the universe was cold until the sun came? And then giving him light. 
So photons wasn't around, lighting up the darkness before um, the sun. Later, later, another one says, I think I need light over here. All right, so I know you're joking right now, but hold on. So, so I won't be misquoting. He says that the black man does this. He creates, uh, he creates as light out of darkness, but there was, okay. So let me go here. I need to make note of this. Okay. So start from the top. He created the heavens and the earth. How did he do it? First, he created himself and he was like of himself. He emitted light from the live atom of self. All right, so I'm going to give him the benefit of, of the doubt that this is after he created himself. And then, okay, so I'm going to, that might, now I'm looking at it, he might be saying that. He might be saying that the light created. Okay, so I'm going to go with that. I don't think he's saying that he created light you know, uh, to make himself. So I'm just going to skip past all that. But um, yeah, but the fact that he can create a son by snapping his fingers right here, he just said, come on, son. And I'm going to say, come on, son. We can't just believe that spooky st right there. You just say, come on, son, that thing just appears. I'm going to say, come on, son. We got, we need more, you know, science. We need more details okay so <laughs> another one says i think i need another light over here but there be a light they kept on saying there be a light until they fill the space so much light that you can find it you can't find a telescope that will take you to a wall of darkness all right mm, so i'm gonna get past all that let's see if any more creation here Okay, so let's go here. What is it saying? Our Savior has arrived, chapter 12. Okay, paragraph 11. Looking at God's creation, the universe, and his creatures, his creatures without number and unlimited, we have been able to obtain the knowledge of just how God created the universe and himself. We have never known where he himself began or who was first, God or the universe. Okay, that's that's interesting. Hold on, we have never. Well, we know the universe was first because it said God wasn't there. Adam had to he had to self create. So maybe, um, okay, just okay. We. Paragraph 12, chapter 12. We have never known where he himself began or who was first, God of the universe. Okay. Just who is God? What is he? He is of the essence of the universe. Okay, bro. You just said you don't know which one comes first, but you say he's the essence of the universe or some invisible power, spirit, or force that has no equal comparison in his creation. So he's a invincible power, spirit, or force. All right. So God's a spirit. Let me just let me just note that. Just who is God? Is he okay? It's asking, is he? The knowledge of God has been kept a secret by 12 men on our planet for many thousands of years. The 12 pass their knowledge on from son to son, but the number possessing this knowledge is never more than 12, and they are not to ever reveal it. The wisest of scientists have worked, studied, and searched all their life long for the actual knowledge of God and have failed to obtain it. Finally, they form their own opinions of God. 
Right. So this is um. So I guess we wrap it up after this. Chapter twenty three. Al Sari has arrived. As God created the present heaven and earth out of nothing. Okay. How do you do that? How do you create something out of nothing? Like, what do you start with? So will God in person uh, build a, a new heaven on earth from nothing, a people who are nothing? So it's, I mean, so it's symbolic. So it's, he's actually creating something from, from something. I don't know why, you know, that's just confusing to keep saying nothing, but you're actually doing it with something. Okay, so paragraph 52, the making of the difference between the two people. Let me see. It says, made people and they have a beginning and an ending. The black man is a created people and we have no beginning nor ending. Well, you said 78 trillion, 66 trillion, 62. Paragraph 62. This is like the creation of us in the beginning. The God who created us had no material to use to begin a creation. <laughs> he had only himself. Therefore, out of darkness and the thoughtless and invisible, he brought out the visible vision and thought and idea. He made a brain which had the power. He said it again. I totally forget about this. I, I totally forgot about this. And he reminded me, and now I got to address this. He made a brain? How you make a brain 78 trillion years ago? How do, you, how do you do that? He made a brain which had the power to cover the sphere of our thinking and to produce from that thought what image or vision that the brain cells could conceive. Bro, how do you have brain cells in a brain 78 trillion years ago in the outer space where nothing can survive but subatomic particles because it was too damn hot. These things at the time were all new. Yeah, a brain in space, that would be new. That's new now, if you can do that. There was no plan or universe. There was no plan or universe except his. This is our father, the, okay. So what is chapter 26 going to reveal? Uh, it's going to reveal chapter 26, paragraph 20, the will of Allah must be done. Allah could not have a will himself until he had brains. He said, could not have will. Okay, I guess it's supposed to be, it's supposed to say cannot will himself. Okay, so paragraph 20 says, the will of Allah must be done. Allah could not have a will himself until he had brains himself. So he cannot will himself till he had brains himself. He it says it again. That's crazy. He keeps saying it. I, you know, I thought it was a typo at first, maybe an analogy. But this is being said over and over and over. He had brains in space. A lot was created self-created from the atom of life. The atom of life was not able to create flesh and had blood from the earth that he was created on, Allah was created on the very earth that we are on today, but the earth was not as it is today. So when he created himself, he couldn't have flesh and blood. What did he have? Like a spirit? But he had, but, uh, it, it, oh. all right, man. <sighs> You know, a lot of this sounds, you know, a little unbelievable, but when you add the brains there, when you say a lot started from the atom of life and then the atom grew brains to think what it needed next, the whole story after that, bro, you could chalk it up as a fairy tale. Okay. Once you've added the brains, you know, everything else we could kind of science could try to prove and disprove or falsify, whatever. But when you add the brains 
was out there so he could think what he needed next, that just suspended the entire doctrine as fairy tale. <clears throat> All right, man, I'm out of here. I had enough. Peace.
Who does not tell you the exact age of the universe? Do if 4.5 billion is not the exact age, but as close as possible, that's good. That's good. Who can go back 4.5 billion years and prove anything? That means science is, <laughs> is damn near perfect. It's getting there, dog. 